Imagine looking up maybe just the other night and boom, there's something new, a, uh, a fresh point of light that definitely wasn't there before. Right. Suddenly blazing brighter than expected. It's that kind of thing. You yeah. know, the universe just throwing these fastballs at us. That's what makes astronomy so exciting. And right now we've got a perfect example. We certainly do. Today we're doing a deep dive into a brand new visitor, Comet C2025R2. Swan. Mm -hmm. Our mission really is to trace its path. Like, where did it come from? How was it found so recently? Why is it acting a bit unexpectedly? And what might it mean for us right here on Earth, including maybe a meteor shower? Exactly. It's a story moving super fast, literally, and, well, in terms of discoveries. It really is. And this comet, C2025R2 Swan, it's causing quite a stir. It's not just, you know, another faint, fuzzy spot. Okay, so let's get into it. This thing is new, like just appeared new. That's right. Its official designation, C2025R2 Swan, gives us some clues. The C tells us it's non-periodic. Meaning it's not one of the regulars, like Helly's. It's maybe a first-timer. Or it hasn't been this way in a very long time. Precisely. Which is fantastic for science, because it's likely carrying pristine material from way out. From the Oort cloud, perhaps. Stuff that hasn't been cooked by the sun before. And the swan part. That's the instrument. Yes, from the SOHO spacecraft. But what's really fascinating here, I think, is who found it. Ah, yeah. This wasn't a big observatory initially, was it? No, it was an amateur astronomer, Vladimir Bazigli. He spotted it looking through publicly available images from Soho's SWAN instrument. Wow. So anyone technically could have seen this. If they knew where and how to look, yes. SOHO is the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory watching the sun. Its SWAN instrument maps hydrogen, but it picks up comets too. They're hydrogen envelopes. That's incredible. And amateur using public data makes a major find. It really highlights how accessible astronomy is becoming. You don't necessarily need a giant telescope anymore. A keen eye and internet access, you know. Truly inspiring. Okay, so Bazugli spots it on, what, September 11th? That's the discovery date, yes. September 11th, 2025. And this comet wasn't hanging around. It made its closest approach to the sun, its perihelion, almost immediately. Yeah, incredibly fast. Just the next day, September 12th, it zipped around the sun at a distance of 0.5 AU. Okay, 0.5 AU. Remind us what that means in like everyday terms? Uh, that's half the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So think about it, half the distance we are from our star. That sounds pretty close for a comet. It is. Getting that close means intense solar radiation, lots of heat, lots of solar wind hitting it. Which is what makes it light up, right? All the ice and dust getting blasted off. Exactly. It drives the activity, forms the coma, the fuzzy head and the tail. The closer it gets, generally, the more active and brighter it becomes. Makes sense. So that was its close pass to the sun. What about its close pass to us here on Earth? When should we be looking out for that? The key date for us is coming up October 19th, 2025. And how close will it get then? It'll swing by at 0.26 AU. 0.26. So even closer than it got to the sun relative to us. Well, it's about a quarter of the Earth's sun distance. So yeah, much closer to us than half the Earth's sun distance. How close is that compared to, say, Mars? Ah, good comparison. Mars, at its very closest approach to Earth, is around 0.38 AU away. So this comet will actually be significantly closer than Mars ever gets. Wow. Okay, that's genuinely close for a celestial object like this. It really is. And these orbital numbers, they seem pretty solid based on the early observations. A close flyby like this is a fantastic opportunity to study it, like getting a front row seat. A cosmic VIP pass, you could say. Now, things got even more interesting just a few days after discovery, didn't they? There were some amazing photos taken. Yes, almost immediately. On September 15th, just four days after discovery, some stunning images emerged. Who took them? And where? They were captured by Gerald Remen and Michael Yeager, two very well-known astrophotographers. They were observing from Namibia. Namibia? Yeah. Right? Famous for dark skies. Exactly. Farm Tivoli specifically. It's one of those incredible spots with almost zero light pollution, absolutely vital for seeing faint details on something like a comet. And where was the comet in the sky at that point? It was near Spica, the bright star in the constellation Virgo, right. which meant it was really well placed for observers in the southern hemisphere at that time. Namibia was perfect. Right place, right time. Definitely. And those images showed something unexpected, didn't they? Beyond just being beautiful pictures. They did. The comet was bright unexpectedly bright. How bright? It was measured at magnitude plus six. Okay, magnitude plus six. For listeners maybe not familiar with the scale, what does that mean visually? So lower numbers are brighter, 
Magnitude plus six is right around the limit of what the human eye can see without aid if you're under perfect dark rural skies. Like in Namibia. Precisely. Hmm. For most people, even in suburbs, you definitely need binoculars to spot it easily at plus six. Maybe small telescope. But the key phrase is unexpectedly bright. Huh? Why is that such a big deal for comet watchers? Well, it means our initial guesses about its activity were wrong. Significantly wrong. It was pumping out way more gas and dust than predicted for its size and distance. So, it could be bigger than thought? Or maybe something broke off? Could be several things. Yeah. Larger nucleus, yeah. Or maybe it has unusually volatile ices that vaporize easily. Or perhaps its trip near the sun exposed a fresh, very active surface patch. We don't know for sure yet. But the bottom line is, it was way more active. Much more active. And that brightness, that outpouring of material, it suggests something else potentially very exciting. Which leads us to the meteor shower. Exactly. That unexpected brightness isn't just visually interesting. It has physical implications. Okay, so connect the dots for us. How does a bright comet potentially lead to a meteor shower for Earth? We know comets leave trails of debris. Right. As they orbit the sun, they shed dust and ice particles along their path. It's like leaving a trail of cosmic breadcrumbs. And if Earth's orbit crosses that trail... Then we plow through that debris stream, those tiny particles, often no bigger than sand grains, hit our atmosphere at incredible speeds. And burn up as meteors, shooting stars. That's the mechanism. Now, some studies, including updates from the Minor Planet Center, are suggesting this comet, C2025 R2, might produce a meteor shower for us around October 5th. Okay, October 5th. But here's the key link, right? Why does the unexpected brightness make this potential shower more interesting? Because that brightness tells us it's shedding more material than we thought, considerably more. Uh-huh. So it's not just brighter visually, it's literally leaving behind a denser, richer trail of debris. That seems to be the strong implication, yes. If it's releasing enough gas and dust to shine at magnitude plus six, when maybe we expected, say, magnitude plus eight or plus nine, then the solid particle stream it's depositing is likely much denser, too. Which means when Earth crosses that path around October 5th, we might fly through a thicker cloud of particles than initially anticipated, which could translate to a more active meteor shower, more meteors per hour. So this changes the prediction from maybe a minor shower to potentially something more noticeable. Potentially, yes. It makes the prospect much more robust. It upgrades it from a maybe a few to a definitely worth looking out for kind of event. It's a direct consequence of observing how surprisingly active the comet is. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's Quickly pull this all together. We have this comet, C2025 R2 Swan, discovered September 11th by an amateur. Vladimir Bazugli, using SOHO data. Whips around the sun incredibly close on September 12th. At 0.5 AU. Then observed just days later, September 15th, looking unexpectedly bright, magnitude plus six. Much more active than predicted, implying a denser debris trail. Which raises the exciting possibility of a potentially enhanced meteor shower around October 5th. Mm -hmm. And then the comet itself makes its closest approach to Earth on October 19th. At just 0.26 AU. Really quite close. So for you listening, what's the main takeaway here? I think it's that this is a dynamic, unfolding event. Keep an eye on the news, especially around those key dates. October 5th for the potential shower. October 19th for the comet's closest approach. And remember that brightness observation on September 15th was key. Absolutely. It really changed the picture. Cometary science is like that things can evolve rapidly as we get more data, predictions get updated. It's real-time science happening right now. It really underscores that the solar system still holds so many surprises, doesn't it? Absolutely. Constant reminders that there's so much we're still learning. So as we wrap up this deep dive, maybe something for you to think about. What does a comet like this appearing suddenly, behaving unexpectedly. Tell us about those really distant, dark corners of our solar system, the places these objects come from. Right, what reservoir is sending us these messengers and what triggers their journey inwards? And maybe also, how will discoveries like this one, made by amateurs using public tools, continue to change how we map and understand our own cosmic neighborhood? It's a fascinating question about the future of discovery. Definitely something to ponder. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Comet C2025 R2, SWAN. Keep your eyes on the skies.